This sleeping pad isn't made by one of the big manufacturers like Thermarest, Xped, or Big Agnes, but it has impressed me with its potential for being the best budget option sleeping pad on the market. So today we're looking at whether the Outdoor Vitals Oblivion sleeping pad is an insane value, or if it makes too many sacrifices in order to achieve that low price. Let's start off by talking about what's good about the pad. The first thing is the warmth. It has an ASTM tested R value of 3.5, but there is, there is an elephant in the room with this pad when it comes to warmth. But first, we'll go over how it achieves that R value. They're using three different technologies in order to provide insulation and achieve that R value of 3.5. The first is a synthetic insulation that fills up the space inside of the pad as you inflate it because it's attached to the top and the bottom. Just it's, it's a very effective insulation for convective heat loss. The second technology is a reflective film that is also suspended inside the pad, and this helps with radiative heat loss. The third technology is something that we've never seen on a pad before, and that's introducing a reflective kind of coating to the top of the pad in order to also provide some radiative heat loss protection. And this is where I think we see some really interesting results with my field testing. With an R value of 3.5, I wouldn't expect this pad to deal with spring conditions where the ground is cold and frozen and temperatures are hitting around freezing. But I've taken this pad out in those conditions multiple times and it slept very warm, probably as warm as pads I've tested that have R values in the high fours. So I think this pad is sleeping warmer than expected. I'm not sure if that's just due to some ASTM testing standard kind of weirdness or if this reflective coating on top is providing a lot of extra insulation. With all my testing, I'd use this pad with a quilt, which is the situation where I think this reflective coating would really add a lot of warmth. And I'm wondering if that's why I found the pad to sleep a lot warmer than advertised. I don't often say that. I don't often say that a pad sleeps warmer than advertised, but here we are with the Outdoor Vitals Oblivion. I've already kind of alluded to this, but a good thing about this is the price. It costs $115 US, which is which is one of the least expensive sleeping pads out there, unless you're kind of getting to the Amazon ones, which are not gonna be warm, they're not gonna be quality. I would just stick away from those and go for higher quality sleeping pads. And I think the Outdoor Vitals Oblivion falls into that category, but we'll, we'll kind of see, see how that goes as we get into what's bad about this pad a little bit later. The sizes for the pad are great. You have a size regular, which is 21 inches wide. So it's one inch wider than the standard 20 inches. So you get a little bit of extra space. If, if you need it. And then the long wide, which is what I have here, is 25 inches wide, and then I think 78 inches long. I found the long wide to be exactly what I need in order to be comfortable while out on trail, has a good amount of width to it, and I feel pretty comfortable on it. It is three inches thick, so you're gonna be getting a decent amount of kind of thickness from it, unless you're really on the big side and need a super thick pad, this pad is gonna accommodate you from a thickness perspective. Final good thing about this pad is comfort. It uses a tufted technology for its baffling system. That's, that's what Outdoor Vitals calls it, which is very similar to what you'd see with a Nemo tensor. So you have essentially horizontal baffles, but then you have little, little divots kind of as you go along that horizontal baffle, which creates these little tufts, which help relieve pressure points a little bit better than a pad that is purely horizontal baffles like the Thermarest x -Lite. The top of the material is also slightly stretchy, which is really nice, helps with pressure relief and that added comfort. So while the pad is generally comfortable, and I'd say it's probably on par with the Nemo Tensor, there are some aspects of comfort that we'll also get into once we get into what's bad about the pad. But before that, let's talk about the packwizard.com comparables. There's two pa pads that I think are comparable to this pad due to price, as well as some of the other kind of specs. We have the REI Helix, which is gonna be a lot more comfortable than this pad. It's gonna be lighter, but it's gonna be quite a bit more expensive. And then we have the Pariah Recharge XL, which is gonna be heavier, less warm, and less comfortable, but less expensive. Marginally less expensive at just under $100, sometimes on sale for $80. If after this video, the Oblivion or either of those two pads seem like something you're interested in, then you can check them out at links in the video description, as well as the three pad comparison at packwizard.com. That brings us into what's bad about the pad. First of all, the weight, the size large, which I have right here, weighs 830 grams, which is not light. The regular, which like I said, is 21 inches wide, weighs 632 grams, which also isn't light, but it's not in that crazy realm at getting close to a kilogram in weight. With that weight, you also get bulk. Pads that use synthetic insulation are just generally bulky, like the XPED pads, the RAB Ionosphere. So this pad is gonna take up a little bit more space inside of your pack, especially if you have the size large version. 
Another thing that I don't like about this pad, and I've told this to Outdoor Vitals, I went on a trip with them and uh, kind of reviewed their gear right in front of them, is the valve positioning. They put the valve on the bottom of the pad, and I'd rather see that on the top of the pad. It makes it easier to adjust the pad once you're in bed laying on it. If you need to add a little bit of air, if the temperature's dropped and the air inside your pad is kind of deflated a little bit, or if you need to let some air out in order to increase the comfort of the pad. It's a lot easier to do that if the valve is on the top of the pad, kind of off to the side there. Before we get into the, the comfort negatives about this pad, I do wanna say that durability is kind of up in the air. I have had some issues with my Nemo Tensor pads, which use a similar kind of welding and baffling system with leaks around those weld points. Outdoor Vitals uses a 20 denier nylon for their shell material, but it's not usually the shell material. Once you get up to like 20 denier, 30 denier, it's not the shell material that is compromised. It's those weld points that get compromised and you get little leaks around each of those little, little dimpled parts that you see right there. So for comfort, like I said, this pad will sleep similar to a Nemo Tensor. So if that's a comfortable pad for you, then this will also be a comfortable pad for you. But I find that horizontal baffles like this, even though they are slightly dimpled and you do have a little bit more pressure relief, just aren't the most comfortable out there. I, I slept pretty well on this pad, but I did have my arm kind of fall asleep one night where I had it a little bit too inflated. And I just, I kind of rolled around a little bit more compared to pads like the REI Helix or even pads that use vertical baffles like the XPED Ultra 5R. Comfort is always subjective. And I think for a lot of people out there, a pad that sleeps this warm and this comfortably is gonna be an amazing value at $115. If this pad didn't sleep as warm as it does, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it would be kind of average as far as comfort and then quite heavy. But because you're getting an average comfort pad, a pad that's, it's heavy, but not the heaviest pad out there. And then something that's very warm at just over hundred dollars, I think it's a great deal. If you wanna see the trip where I test a whole bunch of Outdoor Vitals gear right in front of Kaysen and Brigham, who are kind of the main designers at the company, go check out this video right up here. It was a ton of fun and you get to see a bunch of different Outdoor Vitals gear in use.